uh, how I was question. Rocky? I a yeah. Uh, what was your memorable moment, like throughout your career, like the one moment you? Gosh, just... I've got some I don't want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was that before, after, or during the matches? On the highways or where? But no, uh, you know, the the biggest thing that probably changed my whole career was, of, of course, getting the Intercontinental Belt from the Steamboat. It put me from being in a lower mid card type guy as opposed then it moved me up to main events and then uh i got recognition for a character i had developed about seven or eight years before that you guys had never seen it the people in canada had seen this character for two or three years before i was ever in wwe and the first time i went to canada to do canadian tv i was booed out of the building and they were trying to make me a good guy <laughs> and the rest of the boys in the back said, how come they hate you so much, man? You're, you're supposed to be a good man. I said, well, they've seen me on TV up here for two years. They had seen the Honky Tonk Man and seen how dastardly and how mean and hateful he was and how, you know, he would cheat to win a match. And so I, had to, I designed and developed this Honky Tonk Man character specifically to be a bad guy, and I did not know how to make it work as a good guy. I can now but I couldn't make it work that way then. It, it was just another case of the fans passing gas at me. <laughs> Once they started hating me, and that was Jesse Ventura's idea to do the, do the, the thing, uh, Jesse's idea was to do the call in and help people and then we'll, they'll hate you and that's how it got switched. Anybody else? Quickly, yes sir. Uh, do you see yourself going to uh, WrestleMania 30? I don't know. That's if they call me, they call me. If they don't, they don't. I'm I'm going to New Orleans to do an autograph signing that uh, Saturday afternoon, and I'm booked on a flight at six o'clock from New Orleans back to Phoenix. So if they call me, I'll stay over. If they don't, I'll be back in Phoenix by the time it's over. Yes, sir. Have you uh, kept any uh, relationships with the uh, wrestlers that you used to wrestle with? I see Bush. I talk to Bushwhacker all the time. In fact, he texted me before I got here. Uh, we talk, I talk to Jimmy Hart about once a month. Uh, I see Valentine periodically when we do autograph signings. I see BK, we don't talk. Listen, in the entertainment and, and, and especially in the wrestling business, you can count, I've always said this, you can count your friends on one finger. That one. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> You really, I mean, we have business acquaintances and business associates, uh, but I mean, I can go back in that locker room now, almost everybody in there loves me. Hey man, how you doing? Great to see you. Well, you guys were just in Phoenix last week. Nobody called me and said, come on down. You know, at the TV tapings, have a big spread of food. Come on down, have, have lunch with us. I never get invited down. So, I mean, how can you shake my hand and go, hey man, it's good to see you. How you been doing? Well, other than starving to death, and I can use a steady <laughs> paycheck. You know, what else do you want to know? Oh, I've been doing great. What? Come on. They hear that from everyone. That, that's why I don't ever go around. If they don't invite me, you won't see me. So remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you got to say with that bar. You have one friend. That's him. <laughs> yes. Now, who's got another question? Is that the pregame show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Real quick. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, so we, we know that. The job is tough on your body. Do you have any, any lasting injuries that you've... Really oh, you just saw me get up out of the chair like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a few minutes to get yeah. straightened up. But, uh, I, you know, it, with any, I see people walking around at, at the store, guys at the golf course and ladies, and, you know, they're 70 years old and uh, eight or nine years older than me, and they're all like this, and their hands all broken up. They didn't play sports. They worked in a factory. They had jobs, and... Any job that, that you're on for 20 or 30 or 40 years is tough on you, no matter what it is. You're going to, jobs were not designed for people to have other than just enjoyment, because no, no matter what the job is, you're gonna have some kind of a physical uh, pains later on. Whether it's, if you're standing on your feet all day, if you're working in a warehouse, if you're loading trucks, if you're delivering the mail, I mean, uh, Serious injuries, I've had necks, backs, perforated ears, chipped teeth, 
broken ankle, had the worst one is having my finger almost torn off, and you guys can look at that on YouTube. I will not look at it. Uh, every injury I always says the worst, but on this one, I was lucky to have a finger. I was lucky to have a hand, and when it got hurt, WWE called me for the Santino and offered me a deal to come back, and I and believe me, if you're an athlete, or you just got signed, or you're going to sign and do a big movie, and you tell them you're hurt, you're injured, you can't do it, they politely tell you, well, as soon as you get well, give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> I did call them when I got well. They were in meetings. Yeah. I kept calling. They were in meetings. Then I stopped calling. <laughs> 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 so other than that, no. I mean, have I been knocked out because have I been, yes yeah every time Jimmy Snook would splash me it knocked me out <laughs> that was every night for like 20 days straight in a row did I have a concussion of course my head hurt me so bad I took every pain pill known to man mm. I don't care what it is if you named it I took it and my head still hurt me mm. and I heard that boy that the quarterback for San Francisco 49ers a left-handed kid that's on the ESPN now on TV Steve Young. Steve Young I remember I was listening to an interview with him once and he said he had had a, got hit in the head really hard in the game. His head was hurting him all week. Next game, got hit again. He said, no pain pill, anything I could take made my head stop hurting. And he said, when my head finally did stop hurting, I said, that's it, I'm quitting this game. And I, I can identify with taking, I was taking multiple doses of the strongest pain medication. I could hardly even get to the ring. It was like, And then, and then Snook was splashing me, and my head would flap back and hit the mat. One, one night, we're in Phoenix. I got my son there. He's like five years old. And he, yeah, he's watching. Snook is literally we did right at toward the end of the match. And then Jimmy was always doing something Jimmy always did, too. You know? <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Leapfrog, I hit the ropes, come back, Jimmy drops down, karate chops right across the nose. Oh. Wow. Now my head's pounding already. Now I've got blood coming out of both nostrils, just pouring. Now he hits me, I spin around, he slams me, then he climbs to the top and splashes me. I was able to spin around, I took the slam. Earl Hebner was referee, and Earl was like this. Snooker climbs up. The blood hit people in the front row. Oh, 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 gosh. oh, my God. oh, God. oh God. Earl, Earl Hebner was covered in blood. He came back to the locker room and he said, Damn, that looked like somebody stomped a tomato out there. <laughs> And I was sitting there with blood just pouring my son. He would always come in, you know, and unlace my boots and everything. I was sitting there and the blood just pouring. He was unlacing my boots and just, just not loud, but just crying, just crying with the blood was just, yeah. I had to call the office and I told Vince the next day we went to Minneapolis and I said, I told him, I said, Vince, uh, I'll do anything. Because, I mean, my time was up. I had torn my peck, my peck was torn. That was a bad one too. If I fall in the water, I still, I can't swim now because I can't pull. It's a pulling motion, I can't pull anymore because the peck tore out. Mm. Now Snook is splashing me every night right on my chest and I said, Vince, I'll do anything, any other finish you can do. I don't mind doing the finish because if I said I'm not gonna do it, they would have fired me because they didn't need me anymore. So I, I, I just said, I'll do anything. I said, Jimmy does a fabulous, the headbutt, and I said, it looks great, I can do that, but to, I said until my peck and everything gets better, I, I can't make him look as, as good as you need him to look. You know, I was like being Jimmy Hart, you know, cover everything with sugar, yeah baby, yeah baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jimmy, he taught me a lot of things, yeah baby, everything's good, but Jimmy, it's not, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that, and the reason Jimmy Snooker didn't like doing the headbutt, now he had the long hair, he did it beautiful. He'd come off the top, boom. You could never, it was beautiful. But he had, he had torn triceps from his elbows, from catching himself in the splash. 
That's why he wouldn't catch himself in the splash. His body, actually, his chest coming from 12. Now, I'm not in physics or anything, but I think a human body weighing 220 pounds from 12 foot, the gravity force, hitting another person, he's got to weigh like 500 by the time he hits you. And he couldn't catch himself anymore on his knees and elbows, so he just hit you. Right. Oh, God. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, God. Whoa. He oh, wait. Big Iron Mike Sharp, and Iron Mike Sharp was tough. He's got a TV match with Snooker about two weeks after the, the tomato stomp that I had, <laughs> and I'm looking at Sharp. He goes, Mike's a big, tough guy. Mike's laying there, takes that, takes that splash, comes back. They rolled him out of the ring and helped him back. Mike comes over, he sits down, he's all dazed. I said, how was it? He said, I've never had something hurt me so bad in my life, it knocked me out. <laughs> I said, I've been taking it for two months. He said, Jesus, man. I'm never going out there with that again. But Jimmy's chest would hit you, and you had to lay. You were supposed to raise up and try to catch. Well, my pecs torn. I can't raise up. You're supposed to do a setup, and when he hits you, then you go. Well, yeah, your head goes back. <laughs> Bam! I can tell right away when a boxer's been knocked out. You know how I know that? Because when he gets hit and he falls down, if his head hits the mat and his head comes up off the mat that far and he falls back down, he is knocked out. I can tell you, when that head bounces twice, it, he's out. He is out. <laughs> wow. If they show it back in slow motion, you'll see the guy fall. You'll see the first thing it hits on a, on a boxer is the back of his head, bam, and then his head will pop off the mat about yay far, up and back down. He's out. Yeah. Anybody else? We got one last question. Last question.